morning to all of you. Honorable Professor G. L. Paris, Minister of External Affairs. Honorable Dr. Subramanian Swami, Member of Parliament and Leader of the Janata Party of India. The Secretary to the President, Mr. Lalit Veeratunga. Secretary of Defense and Urban Development, Mr. Gota Beraja Paksha. Secretary of External Affairs, Mr. Karnathil Kamalugam. Defense Secretary of Pakistan, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, Chief of Defense Staff of Sri Lanka, Commander of the Sri Lanka Navy, Commander of the Sri Lanka Air Force, Inspector General of Police, Chief of Defense Force of Maldives, Royal Brunei Land Force Commander, Past Service Commanders, Guest Speakers, Distinguished Delegates from home and abroad, ladies and gentlemen. Historically, armed forces around the world have been tasked to provide military aid to civil authority at different times. This process is also known as civil military cooperation or CIMIC. The scope of such assistance is manifold. It encompasses military aid to civil community, military aid to civil ministries, and military aid to civil power. The case in Sri Lanka post-conflict situation had no difference. The armed forces were called in to assist the civil community, the civil ministries, and the civil power in post-conflict reconstruction and rehabilitation. The engagement of the armed forces in Sri Lanka in civil military cooperation was in parallel to the humanitarian operation as opposed to the sequential principle of reconstruction and rehabilitation following warfare and emergency relief. The three decade long conflict had left the northern and eastern provinces of Sri Lanka in disarray. The infrastructure, government administrative system, health services, community services, power and energy service, education and housing had been destroyed and disrupted. The social fabric and religious structures which are critical to social and community harmony had been systematically reduced. Approximately 300,000 people were displaced from their villages. They had to be fed, clothed and sheltered and subsequently resettled. Over 10,000 combatants surrendered voluntarily. They had to be taken care of, rehabilitated and reintegrated into society. A sense of disharmony and dis distrust prevailed. The situation necessitated a well-concerted response. The government responded with a well-coordinated strategy integrating government ministries and agencies and national and international relief agencies under the leadership of His Excellency the President, Mind the Rajapaksha, the President of the Democratic Socialist of Republic, Republic of Sri Lanka. The government strategy recognized the need to move on as one nation to achieve a Sri Lankan identity, transcending beyond multi-ethnic, multi-religious and multicultural diversity to exploit the geostrategic advantage Sri Lanka is endowed with. Reconciliation is the key for a Sri Lankan identity to emerge through disharmony and distrust that prevail. The defeat of terrorism in May 2009 and the ensuing devastation, both physical and psychological, provided the ideal launching pad to seek reconciliation through reconstruction, rehabilitation, resettlement and reintegration, in short, the five R's. Today, Three years on, Sri Lanka has successfully treaded the path towards national reconciliation. The infrastructure in the northern and eastern provinces are being developed to contemporary standards. Over 90% of the displays have been resettled in their original habitat. Over 10,000 former combatants have been rehabilitated, rehabilitated and reintegrated into civil society. The economy in the northern province is booming at an annual growth rate of 22%. The recommendation of the lessons learned and reconciliation commission appointed by His Excellency the President Mahindra Rajapaksha to inquire into the failure of the ceasefire agreement of 22nd February 2002 and the sequence of events that followed up to 19th May 2009 
are being implemented gradually. Devolution power to the provinces is being negotiated. Many countries, mainly from the West, wanted Sri Lanka to implement and or introduce many measures at a rapid pace, surpassing their own in similar circumstances. However, Sri Lanka, unwavering under the guidance of the Presidential Task Force for Recon Reconstruction and Rehabilitation, led by Honorable Basil Rajapaksha, Minister of Economic Development, implemented measures at the optimum pace and was successful in bringing normalcy and resettling all the IDPs within a period of three years. This proves beyond doubt the success of our own systems. These giant strides reflect the commitment of all stakeholders engaged in the process of reconstruction, resettlement, rehabilitation, reintegration, and reconciliation. It is unfortunate that all the work done is not conveyed or, no, or not known by the international community. We do acknowledge the lack of dissemination of information to the outside world. This deficiency has been exploited by the diaspora to dilute the progress made and generate anti-government propaganda, especially violations of human rights by the military. Very little is known of the military that has gone beyond the call of duty, collecting finances and building homes for their one-time adversary. Defense Seminar 2012 on the theme towards lasting peace and stability will showcase the post-conflict progress in Sri Lanka in the spheres of reconstruction, resettlement, rehabilitation, reintegration, and reconciliation. It will provide insights into the ground realities in Sri Lanka and afford the opportunity to assess for oneself the genuine effort at national reconciliation by all concerned and ignite a change in your perceptions of Sri Lanka. I welcome Honorable Dr. Swab Subramanian Swami, the Member of Parliament and Leader of Janata Party in India, Dr. Russell Hoard, Prof. Ari Kuglansky, Sir Bill Jeffrey, and Colonel James Robinson, who will share their intellect in their fields of specialization as guest speakers. I welcome Lieutenant General retired Asif Yasin Malik from Pakistan, who had been recently appointed Defense Secretary of Pakistan, Major General G.S. Shergill from India, and Major General retired M.G. Stone from United States of America, who will share their experience in various post-conflict scenarios. I welcome Major General Ahmad Sham, the Chief of Defense Force of Maldives, and Brigadier General Dato Yusuf, the Royal Brunei Land Force Commander, and other all senior delegates from across the world. Your presence is testament to the strong bonds between our armed forces. Last but not the least, I welcome each and every delegate to the Defense Seminar 2012 from all over the world. I am confident that the Defense Seminar 2012 will provide the platform for professional interaction and enrichment of knowledge leading to the development of new strategies and techniques to overcome post-conflict challenges that the world may face in the future. I wish all of you a rewarding experience and a memorable stay in Sri Lanka. Now, I will take this opportunity to introduce you to the keynote speaker today. Honorable Ministers, Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The end of conflict and the dawn of peace bring about a wide array of challenges. The post-conflict scenario in Sri Lanka was no different. Addressing these challenges ranging from political, social, psychological, diplomatic and security concerns was the core to sustaining the hard-won peace. The government of Sri Lanka, under the leadership of His Excellency President Mahinda Rajapaksha, stood up to the challenge and responded with a coordinated strategy, integrating ministries and agencies and national and international relief agencies. The strategy so formulated was put into action with the fullest support of the armed forces, which adopted rapidly from war fighting to nation building under the visionary guidance of the Secretary of Defense and Urban Development, Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksha. 
We are privileged to have none other than Secretary of Defense and Urban Development delivering the keynote address at Defense Seminar 2012. Sri Godabi Rajapaksa joined the Sri Lanka Army in 1971 and rose to command the 1st Gajaba Regiment and Infantry Battalion in 1989. He engaged actively in combat, leading troops successfully during all major operations conducted by the Sri Lanka Army then, among which Operation Trivida Balaya to liberate Jaffna Fort, Operation Liberation to liberate Vadamarachi in Jaffna, and Operation Balavege to liberate Elephant Pass stand out. He was decorated with the Rana Vikrama Padakkama and the Rana Shura Padakkama for gallantry. He also functioned in key staff appointments at Army Headquarters as well as Formation Headquarters and instructional appointments at the Army Training Center, the Ethalawa, and the Kotalawala Defense Academy, Ratmalana. He underwent military education and training successfully in India, Pakistan, and the United States of America, and graduated from the Army Command and Staff College, Wellington, India, in 1983. He retired from regular force of the Sri Lanka Army in 1991. He was entrusted with the responsibility of spearheading the successful campaign to defeat terrorism in Sri Lanka as Secretary of Defense by His Excellency the President Mahindra Rajapaksha in 2005. He is a revered figure in Sri Lanka for leading the military operation that succeeded in ridding the country from terrorism. He was conferred with the doctorate by the University of Colombo in recognition of the services rendered to the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to call upon Secretary of Defense and Urban Development, Sir Gotabe Rajapaksha, to deliver the keynote address. Thank you.